In today's video, per request, I'm going to step through the process of doing a layered texture. So that's where you take your occlusion map, your roughness map, and your metallic map, typically, and combine them into a single texture that you can use to help save uh, texture memory, as well as optimizations within UE4. So let's get started. In this first example, I'm going to use what is, uh, I'll consider kind of an older method of creating a combined texture map, and that's using Photoshop. Um, in my opinion, this is the least efficient way to do it, uh, but if this is a tool that you have, uh, it does work. So here you can see the map that will eventually um, combine together. So if I sort this, you can see the red channel is our occlusion, our green channel is our roughness, and our blue channel is our metallic. Um, and so combined it looks like this. So how do we do it? So over here I have all three maps separated out. So everything that we saw combined here on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my red channel and I'll select my gray. Do control A and control C. I'm going to go over to my blank one which I've created. Same document resolution just this is scaled down so it could all fit on one uh, one screen. So in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my red channel and I'm going to do control V to paste it into it. I'm going to back up here a second and show you that uh, this may be a common mistake. If you have all your channels selected and you press control V you can see it's pasted it in every single channel. That's not what we want uh, because we are pasting this grayscale into our red channel. Again control A, control C, select the, uh, the texture map that we're going to put into it, select our red channel, control V. And then we'll go through the rest. So we'll do green, select the channel, control A, control C, go back to the texture that we want, select our green channel, control V. We'll go to the blue channel, select it, control A, control C, go back to our final texture, select the blue channel, control V. So now if I go back to my RGB, you can see now we match. So red channel is occlusion, green channel is roughness, and blue is our metallic. So that's one way of doing it. Again, this is, I don't particularly recommend it, but if this is a tool that you have, it does work. Uh, so let's jump into Substance Painter now, and I'll show you an alternative method. Okay, so now that we're in Substance Painter, uh, this is something that I know is definitely used. This particular program is used a lot by artists. Um, and so I highly recommend that you create a export preset on this one that will do exactly what we just did um, when you export your textures. So I'm gonna jump over real fast. I'm gonna go to File, Export Textures. This is where we're gonna set it. And I'm gonna jump to the Configuration tab. Now I'm just going to create just a new one, just for example, new export preset. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new R plus G plus B. Uh, we don't want RGB because that combines everything together. We want them separated, so that's the R, G, and B. Now, if you've watched some of the previous videos that I've um, that I've made, you'll know that when it comes to creating a, a layer texture map, if you create an RGBA, so say for example you want occlusion, roughness, metallic, and say add in an additional map, maybe like an emissive, it's important to remember that your alpha channel is just as expensive as your individual RGBs. So um, I would caution you guys that if you are creating a preset and that's the way you want to do it, that's fine. Um, just be aware that you may be better off and more efficient to create an additional RGB. So then you have six channels to work with as opposed to four. Uh, but for this example, we're doing occlusion, roughness, and metallic. So let's go ahead and create a new RGB. What I'm going to do is, and, and you guys can change this however you want to, but I'm just going to do, just say texture set, I'm going to say underscore ORM. So it will take whatever our texture set is, in this case, M hands master, and then it will append onto it the ORM. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get this set up. So we've got three individual channels here that we can use. Which ones do we want to use? So the first one is going to be our AO, not the input ambient occlusion, but our converted maps. Um, to give you guys an idea real quick what's happening here, input maps is anything coming in, converted maps is anything that is combined together to produce your final output. So we want the mixed AO, not the input ambient occlusion. So we'll go ahead and drag this into red, and we'll do gray channel. And then we want, of course, we've got ambient occlusion, and then roughness. So roughness, we are gonna use this input map, which will be built because there's nothing else in converted gray channel. And then of course the last thing is our metallic channel. So we'll drop that into blue and there we go. 
there is our preset. So you could save this instead of, you know, whatever it is want. You can build another one, um, but that's the way that you can combine in Substance Painter. So when you go to output, it will automatically create that combined texture for you. So let's move on now to a third example, which is something that we've built on our end that helps to automate this process. Say, for example, um, you're working with other artists that don't follow this workflow and give you individual maps. This is kind of a little tool to help expedite that process. So we'll look at that next. So in this last example, I want to show you guys something that we've created on our end to help um, in the process of um, your, your texture pipeline to be able to create a layered uh, texture without having to go into Photoshop. Now, uh, what you can see here is we're actually using Substance Player, um, which is typically used to view materials that have been created in Substance Designer. However, there are some non-conventional uses for it, as you can see here, to be able to use it as more of a utility program. Uh, I'm going to jump over real fast into Substance Designer and show you what the actual uh, tool is that we're, we're using. It's very, very simple. You can see we take our occlusion, our roughness, our metallic map, and then also a, um, something that we can plug into our alpha channel sense in the event that we did want to use this. Uh, but the primary thing we're focusing on here are the three input maps. Um, so we take those maps, we convert them to grayscale, and then we merge them into an RGBA texture, and we create a final output. So if I jump back over to Substance Player, here you can see our occlusion, roughness, and metallic maps, along with the ability to set the output size. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull in the textures that were separated. So we'll pull our red one in, load it into our occlusion. I will take our green channel, load it into the roughness. And then finally, I'll take our blue channel and load it into our metallic. So there you can see it looks vaguely familiar and vaguely similar to what we had created in Photoshop. That's because it is. It's the exact same process. Um, now this tool, um, it's free. Uh, I've actually uploaded it onto Substance Source, I believe is the place for it. I will link it in the comments in case you guys want to use this. Uh, again, Substance Player is absolutely free, so there's no reason why you can't download it, use it yourself. Um, feel free to take advantage of this. I've also included another tool on there in case you run into a problem where, say for example, an artist has given you a combined texture map, but instead of using occlusion in red, roughness in blue, metallic in green, it's, it's flipped flopped uh, there's a new, another tool on there that allows you to extract those individual channels to separate maps so super handy again you may run into it uh, those are free so definitely use them so I hope that this video helped you out um, I want to thank Matthew for putting this in the comments and asking requesting this um, again I read those so if you guys have suggestions things you want to see um, I'm more than happy to put something together for you guys um, it definitely helps me get ideas and inspiration so um, again, showed you three different methods that you can use to create a layered texture. Um, I recommend regardless that you do it in your workflow. Um, it saves a ton on texture memory. It will make your other artists and programmers happy and keep your budgets down for your game. So um, I hope that helped. And again, thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys' support. And uh, we'll see you later.